Pet Cheetah has to be the weirdest name for a song from the Trench album, except for maybe Neon Gravestones. But that's beside the point because it actually does mean something, and it seems to be something that we see show up on a lot of 21 Pilots albums in the past on songs like Migraine or Addict with a Pen. What do I mean by that? Well, let me explain. Hey everybody, I'm Clifford Summy, the pop song professor, and welcome to my channel where we make English class awesome by explaining and sometimes roasting song lyrics on school days. And today we are talking about none other than Pet Cheetah by 21 Pilots from their new album, Trench. Stick around this channel for all of the songs from this album to be explained, and check out my Patreon group in the description down below. There's an awesome community of people there in our Facebook group where we talk about song lyrics and how to write song lyrics, 21 Pilots, and a whole lot more. It's freaking awesome. So Pet Cheetah seems to be about the songwriting process for Tyler. His Pet Cheetah seems to be sort of like his, his musical muse, or the spirit that inspires him to write songs. A muse is like an ancient mythology sort of like persona that would inspire poets to write the, the poems that they did. And for Tyler, it seems to be taking on the form of a pet cheetah. But more on that in a minute, let's talk about verse one. He sings, I'm on an island, no one to confide. Eight days straight, eight hours each, and not one line. This seems to be about the songwriting process. He's alone, it feels like he's isolated by his thoughts and his creative process, and he hasn't been very productive. He's worked 64 hours in the last eight days, that's including weekends, and he still hasn't come up with one line's worth of a song. Now, that's gotta be discouraging. That is some intense writer's block. So if you as a songwriter feel like your writer's block is too much to deal with, it might be pretty difficult to deal with, but eight days straight for eight hours every day, that's pretty intense. And he can feel pressure start to possess my mind, he says. So I'll take this beat I should delete to exercise. So maybe he's talking about the beat to this very song and he's saying, you know, it's not quite good enough yet and I should just get rid of it, but I'm going to use it to exercise. In his interview with Zane Lowe, he talked about songwriting as a muscle that you exercise. It's something that you have to practice and the more you do it and the more you're kind of up on your skills and the more you're warmed up, the better you'll be at it and the more easily it will come. And so I think he's saying here in this first verse, I'm gonna take this beat that I should just get rid of and instead of just getting rid of it and trying to start something new, I'm gonna keep messing around with it and I'm gonna keep trying to exercise that songwriting muscle, which goes along really well with the pre-chorus where he says, no, I move slow, I want to stop time, I'll sit here till I find the problem. So instead of just getting rid of the beat, he's gonna try to fix it meticulously, going into the details and seeing just how he can make it work. That pre-chorus provides a strong transition into the chorus where he starts to describe the pet cheetah itself. He says, I've got a pet cheetah down in my basement, which is where Tyler's studio is in his house. He says, I've raised him and bathed him, so he's connected with him, close with him. It's like a child to him, perhaps. He says, and named him Jason Statham. Why in the heck would Tyler Joseph name his pet cheetah Jason Statham? Well, I'm glad you asked, that's a great question. In an interview with Rob Forbes recently, Rob Forbes was like, so if you had a pet cheetah, would you really name him Jason Statham? And Tyler was like, yeah, I would. This was a, a set of lyrics that he had written previously, and apparently Josh had always wanted Tyler to work those lyrics, or maybe the name specifically Jason Statham, into a song, and so Tyler was like, I guess this works. There doesn't seem to be any specific reason why he would name him Jason Statham, any sort of like deeper significance. It could just be him goofing around a little bit. It could be the fact that it fits really well rhythmically, or it could be that he watched a lot of Jason Statham movies. I mean, there could be something deeper, but for now, we don't know. And he says, I've trained him to make me these beats. Now my pet cheetah's quicker in the studio than on his feet. Cheetahs are very, very quick on their feet, the fastest land animal. So to say that he's quicker in the studio making beats than he is on his feet is to say that he's really good at making beats and he can make a lot of them very fast. And so then Tyler comes at us with verse two. He says, I'm gonna get mine and get going. I'm showing my faces in just enough places I'm done with tiptoeing. I'll stay in my room. My house is the one where the vultures are perched on the roof. So he's taking more agency than he feels like he has been recently and he's deciding to do exactly what he wants to do. But then as he describes his house, he's talking about the vultures, which are kind of the symbol of Trench and are on the Trench album cover and saying that they are on his house could refer to the fact that vultures, I think they've been referred to in the lore so far as quote unquote death eaters, and that's because vultures eat dead animals, and Tyler's described himself as a vulture. He feeds off of what is dead, and so this could mean that he's he's pulling from writer's block, from a dead sense of creativity. It could mean that he's pulling from a, 
uh, like darkness in his mind or suicidal thoughts or depression or something like that or from his you know from his desire to do wrong at times that he's trying to fight against it could be that he's pulling the strength from those sorts of feelings and thoughts into his ability to write music. There have been a few videos out there recently, particularly the Zane Lowe interview where Tyler Joseph has confirmed that he is a Christian. And so obviously there's gonna be some theological implications in this as well with, with sin and the desire to do what's wrong as opposed to what is right. And then in this next line, I think he's referring to the skeleton click. He says, get behind me. I bet this nepotistic mindset will help us get ours as we're growing. So that could be as a group, the nepotism is them kind of favoring themselves. They are a clique after all. He says, this clique means so much to this dude, referring to himself, it could make him afraid of his music and be scared to death he could lose it. Now, he could be afraid that he'll lose the skeleton clique and his fan base, that family he's created, or it could be that he'll lose his ability to create music that says something to them and says something to himself. And that's part of where the writer's block comes from, is that he's afraid that he won't be able to write music, that there's too much pressure to write music that connects with people and helps him to really speak to people through his own vulnerability and experiences. And that kind of brings the song full circle because he started out saying, I can't think of anything. He's giving us the surface level details. He kind of gives us this big picture of what's happening. And then as a lot of artists do, the verses tell a dynamic story. So in the first verse, we hear the details. We hear the surface level of what's happening. But then the dynamicism or the movement of those verses is in the second verse, we hear the reasons why. And so it's like the camera is moving from above planet Earth down into the core to see what the reason is. So Tyler could be trying to catch up to his pet cheetah who's making so many beats that need lyrics put to them. He could be trying to work with this pet cheetah that he's trained to create music that's good enough for the fan base. There's a couple of different nuances or perspectives that you could take to look at this song particularly. But that is the overall meaning of pet cheetah. And if you want to keep talking about this, comment down below or join my Patreon in the description where there's that community of people who love talking about things exactly like this and who are just all around awesome people. Thanks so much for watching. Stick around for more 21 Pilots explanations. Check out these videos while you wait and I'll talk to you guys soon.